Eric and Eric here, Mosky Homebrew, and today we have the Catalyst Fermenter by Craft Brew. Uh, they sent us this fermenter, and we're gonna review it for you. We're gonna do a five gallon batch Belgian blonde ale. Belgian blonde? Yes. And see, put this thing through its paces and give you our feedback on what we think of it. So, the first thing we can do is unbox it, put it together. Yeah, and then we can craft a brew. Craft a brew. Get it? You let me do this because I'm taller. Yeah, I can barely see inside of it. There's instructions. We all know how you are with instructions. It comes with tubing, which is kind of nice. Oh, that is handy. Yeah. Oh, there's that honeycomb structure that they talk about. Yeah. This is definitely child food. Yeah. Actually, they give you a mason jar. Yeah. That's cool. I think they give you everything you need to just use it. As it is. That's handy. That's a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's almost. Yeah, this is really thick, actually. <laughs> That's what he said. All right, now we got all the pieces out. Now we got to put it together. Oh. Okay. Like. Yeah, so it goes the other way. Oh, God. There was one piece in there. There we go. Stick, it in, the, stick it in the hole. All right, then we got screws on the outside. I think I figured out how the rest of this goes together. Oh, yeah? The top goes on top. Well, there's only two more pieces. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three here. There's not an extra one. <laughs> That's always good when you have extra pieces. Oh ye. Okay. Place tank on stand. Screw the valve onto the tank, make it sure. The valve handles turn downwards, not upwards. Alright. Initial yeah. thoughts. Um I guess the plastic is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, the, the pictures don't really do the plastic justice. Yeah. Especially the tank. It's made of a really thick, they call it like Triton plastic. Yeah. Which is supposed to be uh, scratch resistant. Yeah. Once the beer is in here, I would never move this. Right. I feel like it would kind of well, be. And I think that that might be one of the problems once we get done with brew day. Yeah. Is we fill this up out here in the garage and we're going to move it into my stairs. Mm -hmm. So. And it's not like you can take this out and set it down easily. Yeah, you can't just set it aside. Without the stand. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you almost need two stands. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, it goes together very easily. Uh, packaging was good. It comes with your bottling attachment. So instead of having the ball jar on the bottom, you can use this. And they even give you a section of hosing. So you can actually do bottling from the fermenter and no bottling bucket involved. Uh, but this definitely prevents a lot of oxida oxidation. Yeah, it helps. With, yeah, it having to helps. move it from yeah. not having to move it to a bottling bucket mm -hmm. certainly would help. Yeah, butterfly valve is nice. Yeah, the butterfly valve is something nice. Uh, I mean, it's one of the key features of this. But of course, when you look at the photos online, you're like, oh, it's made out of plastic. It's really, it might be really cheap or chintzy. Mm -hmm. I mean, plastic you kind of scares some people, but. That is a very solid and well-built plastic butterfly valve. Or a plastic butterfly valve is actually not yeah. too bad. And it, yeah. the clicks kind of make it feel good instead mm. of just turning it. True. There's a little bit of resistance, I guess. Yeah, and then it seals. And the, the butterfly valve itself is also made out of plastic, but once again, it looks like a very high-quality plastic. Interesting things. Yes. All right. Anyways, uh... I think it's time to get started on this brew day. Yeah. So, let's do it!
summarize the whole review on the Catalyst Fermenter. We've seen it online before. Our initial thoughts were it's made out of plastic. It's pretty expensive. It's kind of cool you can reharvest your yeast, but is it really worth it? Once we got the product in, we assembled it. Very easy to assemble and put together. Just a four piece leg set and put the actual fermenter, sit it down on top. Very easy to assemble. Uh, was a little surprised at how well or how uh, the quality of the plastic fermenter itself. It's a very thick, um, they call it a scratch resi resistant, I think it's called like Titan or something like that. We'll have to see how it lasts uh, as we continue to use it here and there. Um, and of course, if we have any issues with it in the future, we'll let you guys know in our future brew day videos. With it just sitting on the table uh, with no liquid in it, it was still not very sturdy. You could still kind of wiggle it back and forth. And I think that just comes from the design of the legs. Not a huge deal, but just something we noticed as we were putting it together. All in all, everything that we had to go through during the brew day went well, very smoothly, uh, very easy to sanitize and clean this device. Big opening on the top. Uh, we were able to throw the beer in there, ferment it for two weeks. Before we put the yeast into the fermenter, we actually removed a lot of the hop debris and hop break that usually settles before active fermentation starts up. Before we pitched the yeast, we allowed that to settle into a ball jar, remove the ball jar, replace it, and open that back up and then pitch the yeast. Almost like a secondary transfer before actually adding the yeast. Just being able to separate that without having to use filters and that is pretty nice actually. Once we added the yeast, fermented fine, used a blow off tube, uh, to a, I use a growler filled with water and star sand. Uh, everything went fine, no big explosions or anything, nothing popped off. Uh, fast forward two weeks to today and uh, everything I think went pretty smoothly. I was able to harvest the yeast, it's sitting in my fridge now. Um, open up, I actually just fermented with the valve open the whole time and a lot of that yeast came down. Um, one thing I did notice was uh, back on the brew day, it was difficult to maneuver or move this container. It's just big and because it's so wide at the top, it allows the liquid to sloth, sloth, slosh around a little bit more. Um, wasn't a big deal, we didn't have any issues, but just some things that we noticed as we were handling the device. A few things I think they can improve on. Uh, the latching mechanism for the lid is just kind of strange. Um, it's, it's got plastic flaps and I feel on the sides and you actually push down and fold them over a piece that's sticking out of the plastic fermenter. Uh, I feel, personally, I feel like that's, it may wear over time and become weaker or stretch out and just not steel, seal as well. The next thing would be more of a sturdier stand. Uh, like I said, when we first noticed it with no liquid in it, it kind of moved or sloshed, sloshed not didn't slosh, uh, rocked back and forth uh, because there was no weight in it. And then even when we added the weight, it was still moving back and forth. You could just kind of poke it and it would just go and slowly stop. And that's just, I think it's a lot of weight on those plastic legs. If they could come up with something a little more sturdy, um, maybe metal, aluminum or something, uh, it may help with just keeping it in place and maybe even even being able to pick up and move it from uh, location to location. The bottling mechanism looks like a little nipple on the bottom. It would be really nice if they could just throw a uh, removable filter in there. Uh, as I was throwing it into my keg, there was still a lot of material and debris on the sides of the fermenter. And as it wasn't anything I could allow it to fall in the jar, it was just stuck on the sides. So as the liquid was kind of moving down quickly, all that stuff on the sides was kind of floating around, getting agitated, and then going into the keg. Uh, not a huge deal. It's all gonna settle out in the keg as it cools down. It'll just come through the tap the first few pours. Not a huge deal, but a very simple solution to that would be a fine filter inside of that. Um, because they have the valve on there, it would be very easy. If it gets clogged while you're transferring, close the valve, take that off, take the filter off, clean it, and remove it, being able to remove it is the other thing because A, you wouldn't even have to use it if you didn't want to. Being able to include it, just a little bit of a safety net is all. Another one of my concerns, uh, as I just realized it, now that I'm getting ready to clean it, 
I'm gonna have to store this somewhere and I don't know where. It seems to take up a larger footprint than a normal fermenter would. As always, we will leave a link in our description to uh, the product where you can purchase it. And thank you Craft Brew for so giving us the sample. Uh, we will continue to use it in future homebrew days and we will keep our viewers updated with how it's being used and aged and any issues that we have with it in the future. As always, make sure to subscribe, like this video, drop us a comment if you have any questions. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.